Hickok 45, a lot of guns on the table, but today's subject is this one right here. The only one that's loaded, 41 Magnum. Let's just see if it will shoot, all right? Let's try a pot right away. <laughs> yeah, how about a 12 ouncer? Whoa, short work of that. What about a watermelon? <laughs> oh, there's another pot. Big one. Put a hole right through it. <laughs> and we should have one more round, so let's hit a two liter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, six. As you can tell, the 41 Magnum has some punch. My hand will attest to that. Yes. Yes, Hickok 45 here again, and we are shooting the. 41 Magnum, you might not have even heard of it. Uh, many of you have, some of you actually own them. We, I'm gonna lay it back down here in the row. And uh, I want to shoot this gun and talk about it a little bit. Uh, some of you don't know anything about the 41 Magnum. Uh, maybe I can give you a little information. I have never owned one, so I'm not really an expert in the 41 Magnum, but I did sort of live through that era when it came about and was not quite into shooting in a big way yet, other than just 22s on the farm and that kind of thing, because it came about in 64, 1964. And uh, a couple of gun riders or three were trying to convince Smith & Wesson and Remington to come out with a 40 caliber uh, cartridge or 41. I think they really were initially looking for something in 40 and it ended up 41 for various reasons, but you know, about the same. Uh, they thought that would be Bill Jordan, uh, Elmer Keith, uh, Skeeter Skelton was in on it. Those are all well-known uh, characters, you know, from the, what, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and uh, gun riders. And uh, they finally convinced uh, uh, Smith & Wesson to come out with a firearm chambered in 41, 41 Magnum, They're the cartridge they were looking at and Remington to make ammo and everything. It didn't all go as exactly as planned, however. And you might be wondering why it's not more popular than it is. Why maybe you hadn't even heard of it. You've heard of the 44 Magnum, the 357 Magnum, because they're both very, very popular, aren't they? Have been for a long time. But maybe you didn't even know there was a 41 Magnum. Now, if you have one, you certainly know because it has a really like a cult-like following very very popular in some circles okay so i wanted to kind of talk about why and that sort of thing it wasn't that yeah i know what you're thinking hickok this is just like him he's doing a revolver video on the 41 magnum revolver cartridge and he's got stupid glocks lying out here well you're going to see what why i do okay because there's some interesting i think uh uh well history to this cartridge and why it's not more popular why it never quite became popular because it's a nifty little cartridge it really looks like a 44 doesn't it it's a 41 if you had a bunch of these in a bowl you'd have to almost check the head stamps to make sure it's a 41 uh 41 remington magnum they came out with it first of course that's why it's the remington magnum just like 44 but these are of course loaded by federal uh so we're going to talk about a little of that why it's not more popular and why you might have two or three 44 magnums and you probably do not have one of these. Why you don't? I know why you don't. Probably a similar reason uh, that I don't and never have. And, and me, you know, such a revolver fan, you know, big calibers, 45, 44. I've had several 44 magnums, but I've never bitten on a 41 magnum. Uh, I think the reason I never did get one is probably uh, about the same reason, as I say, that a lot of you don't have one and never have. And I'm not bashing it, but there, I think there's just some logical reasons. Let's, let's shoot this two liter here and see if it'll blow up. Boom. <laughs> wow. Okay, it's not gonna blow, so I'm not gonna shoot it again. I'll shoot that pot. <laughs> oh, another watermelon. Oh, that definitely blew up. Oh, let's see if I can hit those further away. All right. No flinching allowed here or I'll miss. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> did he fire five or did he fire six? He fired six. Okay. <laughs> you notice that two liter, the top just came off and flew up in the air. I love it when they do that. I'm trying to train them all to do that. So, uh, yeah, back to uh, my brilliant reasoning, reasoning rationale here. Uh, and I knew a little bit about the cartridge, but I've studied some more on it, and it began to hit me even more clearly. The reason I never got one was when I got into the big bore in the 44, I thought, oh, this is cool, 44 Magnum. There were so many different rounds, uh, cartridges, ammo available, still, still are. And I was hand loading. There were a lot of bullets, uh, cast bullets became more available at that time. They weren't as available back in the 70s as they are now. But uh, components were widely available. You could find brass, you know, in most, you know, a lot of gun shops, you could order some. Uh, it was just available, all the components. And I wasn't that familiar with the 41 and I didn't see as much available for it. And I said, well, I'm getting this big old Smith. I'm also getting 44, you know, you know, with Dirty Harry carried, you know. Um, and that's the part of the story too. So I just, I, I didn't see a big reason for the 41 in, in my uh, collection, my arsenal, right? Since I had 44s, I liked them fine, you know, uh, and I liked the 357. So I, I didn't see as much of a need for it, all right? Well, the reason I've got the Glocks out here is uh, to help maybe provide you a little insight. So these are all unloaded, of course, but the, at least make sure you know, right? That one's unloaded. This one's unloaded. Okay, you saw me unload that one. These three cartridges, again, uh, these savvy gun riders, they thought there was a place for something in between the 357 and the 44. Something in the middle. Maybe it wouldn't kick quite as hard. Uh, they were looking, they were suggesting something about a 200 grain bullet going around 950 feet per second. And that's kind of, a, I guess, what a, a really pretty hot. Uh, what 44 special or 45 ACP it's a little warmer than that but uh, that's kind of what they were looking for especially for police work and then maybe a hotter round for hunting all right Bill Jordan was a uh, border patrol and a famous sh shooter and gun writer and everything and of course Elmer Keith the famous gun writer shooter experimented a great deal ironically I read that he he was famous for blowing up guns 44 specials trying to load them up hotter than you should <laughs> He was the magnum, king of all magnums, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> and he ironically was uh, pushing for a, a lighter charge, uh, a lighter bullet and lighter charge in a 40 caliber, a 41 uh, caliber, kind of a police revolver sort of thing. He thought that would be the cat's meow, you know, back in the 50s or 1960, along in there. But uh, he didn't get exactly what he wanted. But so that's what the kind of the plan was. That's what they were thinking about. Uh, and of course, as you know, the rest is history. Yeah, Smith and Wesson came out with it. Remington created the cartridge and everything. Uh, the reason I've got the Glocks out here, I got a nine millimeter, a 40, and this is actually a 10, but it's, it's standing in for a 45. They're the same size. All right, so there, I see some parallels here. This came to my meager mind here as I was thinking about all this. You, you've had the 45, we got the 44. We have the nine millimeter around a long time. We had a 357, 38 around for a long time. And just like back in the 60s, there was a push for a 40, an intermediate cartridge, a 40, uh, that might be more pleasant to shoot, but it's bigger than the 357, but still, you know, it's a bigger bullet, heavier, but still more pleasant than a 44 to shoot, more controllable, maybe, okay? Well, you know, when the 40 came out in around 1990, 91, that was, kind of the niche for it something between bigger than a nine smaller than a 45 okay which brings me to now it was very successful and still is it's lost some of its uh popular it's losing some of its popularity i think with the modern bullets because we're seeing that there's just not much difference for in a defensive firearm between or amongst the 45 40 and the nine millimeter okay so it's losing gradually, uh, losing some of its uh, real estate there in, in that, that market. Um, but it's, it's, as you know, very popular, very popular still. Uh, probably, I don't know what the percentage is, it's like 60, 70% of all police have one of those on their hips in a 40, okay? So, so that was pretty successful doing the same thing. My point here is, I will eventually get to it, and the reason I have Glocks, <laughs> why was this intermediate cartridge so much more successful than the 41 kind of doing the same thing except in a different era 
this is in the, the mid 60s this was in 1990 look at it you've got a lightweight 357 this combat magnum that's pretty cool that's that's a perfect size firearm as I have pointed out many times 38 357 K frame gorgeous feels great not too heavy all right well the 41 jumped up in size when it came out Smith & Wesson it's in an end frame just like the 44 these are the same size guns these are the same firearms you know same one this one's shorter barrel but you know the, the same big old end frame so that's in my opinion the thing that really kept it from uh, gaining in popularity all right so to break into the police market you know this is a big old heavy gun to carry just like a 44 magnum you know uh, and then also on top of that as I had read Remington their early loadings they had a couple of different loadings and they were both really hot they were they were both even the the lighter one was hotter than the gun riders meant for it to be wanted it to be and then the magnum round was real I think it was like 1500 feet per second or something so you got this really hot round that's hard to control for somebody learning to shoot or even police training and everything else in a big old heavy gun so this there see the difference here with the glock you had kind of the opposite the the big gun up here on the top end the big caliber you know 45 is a big old thick slide big old heavy gun but the 40 came out in a firearm the same size as the 9mm. In fact, as many of you already know this, of course, the magazines even interchange. It's the same size firearm. Now, that's also criticized because, you know, maybe the, the Glock 23 doesn't hold up as, as well and everything because it is fairly light for the big cartridge, all right? But to me, that's, that's the big difference there. And I just see that parallel. This was successful because it came out in the same gun. If the 41 could have come out in a gun this size the k frame or close to it if smith had been able to produce the l frame you know which is between these two uh back in the mid 60s then i think the 41 would have been much more successful if they could have come out with the l frame or some kind of slightly beefed up k frame and the cartridge hadn't been such a barn burner i think it would really have taken off i really think it would have and it's very popular with some people uh, even even though it's, it's not widely popular some people love it i get a lot of requests to uh to shoot it and to to review it i have i just haven't been able to get my hands on one so let me shoot some more <laughs> and kick myself around a little bit again it's very very popular amongst some folks and uh, we appreciate the tennessee gun country lending us this i don't think that even shot it uh and and uh, I believe that's what he told me. He just uh, got a deal on it or whatever. Somebody traded or something in this is in personal collection. And uh, the site was moved over. I think uh, someone had a little flinchitis. You know, it's kind of like a Glock. If you ever get a Glock and uh, the rear sight is moved over to the right you know, in a pronounced way, uh, somebody might have been flinching with it and they moved the sight. But, uh, you know, it's kind of what happened. So I had to move the sights a little bit and I think I've got it on pretty close. Let's try the gong. Boy, did you, did you notice how quickly it got there? <laughs> I think I hit it near the top, didn't I? I better not hold too high. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I'll try the little red. Oh, let's try a goat. I should roll it if I hit hold on the belly. Yeah, a little too low, I think. Well, it hits with authority. <laughs> Rolls them. Rolls them. Oh, there's a two liter that's surviving here. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a hot little number, I tell you. It's just not all that different uh, in my book from a 44, really. I, it really isn't. Uh, and again, that's kind of the, my rationale, my thinking. Now, the, the take on it is that you get less recoil and it shoots flatter than a 44. It makes sense. You know, it's a smaller caliber. Uh, you know, just in general, closer range shooting, I don't think that really amounts to much. You know, if you're a handgun hunter 
and you're shooting a handgun at maybe longer ranges. I mean, generally you're not hunting at really long ranges with a handgun. If it shoots flatter, you know, uh, for you folks that have them, th that's great. Uh, I don't, I, again, I don't think there's a, as much difference or enough difference to, to draw people to it. Uh, as evidenced by the, the sales and, and everything. And, and you think about it too, and I've talked about this before, some of you already know this, the difference between in, in caliber, uh, it's really not uh, the difference between the 357 or 38, you know, and the 41, uh, and the difference between the 41 and the 44. It's not the same. A 38, 357 is 357. It's 36 caliber. Okay, 36 hundredths of an inch. See our video on caliber. 36 hundredths of an inch. 41, 41 hundredths of an inch. 44 is actually not even 44. It's uh, just like a 38, it's not 38, it's 36. A 44 is actually 43. They'll run like 429, 430, 431. So you're talking about 41 caliber versus 43 caliber. That's why those look so much alike. See, 41 versus 43. That's not a lot of difference right there, you know? And, and that's just something, it's just not enough to pull me into thinking, Wow, the 41 is the answer to, to everything. Yeah. Whereas 36 versus 41, that's almost five, isn't it? Yeah, almost, pretty smart. So that's like the difference between say a 40 and a 45, you know, because in a Glock, you know, 40 Smith & Wesson is actually 40 caliber and then a 45 is 45, actually 45 caliber, okay? So, uh, so you know, you got, the, you got a big difference between these two, but then you don't have that much between between these two, all right? Now, another thing that hurt, of course, you know, about time, you know, the thing was being produced in the, you know, in the 60s and everything, you got the 44 came out in 55, you already out, components and everything there. And, uh, and of course, the 357 came out in 35. Uh, and you had what happened in the early 70s. Yeah, Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood, so that made 44 even more popular and everybody wanted a 44, not a 41. Although as I understand, some of the guns that were actually used in the movie were 41. There's all kinds of stories about what was actually used in the movie, which is irrelevant. He made the 44 even more, more popular, okay? So, and then the other thing, uh, as I understand too, some of the gun writers back in the day when this came out were really bad mouthing it. Uh, and I don't know why, you know, exactly and which gun writers it was, but I, I read that and maybe it was just to, to be different or to get attention, get somebody to read your article, you know how that goes. They were clickbait even back then, except there was, that was pre-click clickbait, right? Back in the, <laughs> the 60s when it was just a magazine article title, might have been part of that. And then also in the 60s, there was not a lot of uh, good hollow point ammunition, very little. Uh, in fact, even up into the 70s, I remember early 70s, Supervell was, uh, was out there, but there wasn't, mostly they were shooting in the 60s and before, lead bullets. So that made a difference. Now we have great ammo, high-tech bullets that really perform well, and that's, that's what, and later in the 70s, I guess, when those started coming out, more choices, that rendered the 357 another reason that it didn't survive or do better. We all know it's hard to beat the 357 Magnum. That 125 grain hollow point is extremely uh, effective and it's considered to be one of the very best all around defensive cartridges. Okay, the 357 Magnum, 125 grain hollow point, depending on the bullet, of course, and everything. Uh, and so that made this even more desirable, whereas back in the 60s and before that, they were shooting lead bullets, not hollow points another reason they were looking for something bigger see okay if I throw too much stupid information at you sorry just trying to give you an idea how these things evolve we see it today we see different cartridges come out different guns and experimentation and some are successful some are not we've got the 300 blackout out there cranking around right now I don't know how it's doing exactly in some circles it's doing well and there's all kinds of cartridges being developed you know uh, the, the firearms industry is so healthy right now is part of the reason for that, isn't it? It's been booming for the last 10, 15 years. Uh, so there's a lot of experimentation and research. But, I mean, think about a time when 
you had this and you had this and you didn't really have uh, anything in between. There were some so there were some old cartridges like the 41 Colt and some of those uh, before that. But so anyway, the 41 Magnum, I'll shoot a couple more. Uh, it kicks. I, I really can't tell a lot of difference, I'll tell you, between this and a 44. Again, the reason I don't have one. I, I don't dislike it. Not a bit. You know, it's just the same old big end frame, which I love. Uh, you know, so, you know, and I was, I've been a hand loader forever and I said, well, just to simplify things, I'll stick with the 44. Oh man, we got two, two liters. Let's just take them out. <laughs> oh, there's another pot. Wow. Oh, a bowling pin's hiding behind that falcon. <laughs> it is a hot little ram. Might try another ram. Nice. Did he fire five or did he fire six? What do you think? Yeah. You saw me close the back up. I see a 12 ouncer there I could miss with one hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing like a big old Smith end frame. And uh, it's just that most of us decide we wanted it in 44. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Elmer and Bill Jordan and uh, and Skeeter Skelton, that it, it didn't work out uh, better than it did. And it worked out. Uh, you can't argue with having another choice. You know, a lot of people love the 41, and uh, if I think most people who are really into it, they're hand loaders, and uh, you know they can load them however they want. You know, it's it's nothing wrong with it. It's a nice cartridge, accurate. Uh, you know, 41 caliber, nothing to sneeze at. So uh, can't complain too much about it. One thing I, I, I also, when I borrowed this uh, from the guys up at Tennessee Gun Country, <laughs> well, you saw it in the video where we get our guns. I think both of these actually. Oh man, I was gonna do a separate video on the night guard. And uh, after I shot this a few times, I told John, you know what? I don't want a separate video on this because this thing kicks and this weighs uh, I forgot technically it weighs 30 ounces. I mean, it's, it's really light. It's way too light for an end frame, all right? They came out with these in around 2008, I think, and I think they're all discontinued, the Night Guard series. I may be wrong, you know, though I've checked their website and I can't find them anywhere. They came out with these things in 45 ACP, 357 Magnum, 44 Special, 41, and I'm not sure what else. They're really lightweight. They're designed to be carried, maybe a lot, and shot rarely. Okay, so scandium frame and all that. Now you could find them uh, just like this one, you know, used, of course. If this is your cup of tea, a really hot round and a very lightweight firearm. You, you know what that equals? Lightweight firearm plus hot cartridge. It equals lots of what? Recoil. Uh, <laughs> I haven't fired it. Uh, I told John, I'll shoot it a couple times in the video, I guess. And he just had to shoot it before the video. And I, I think his thumb is still hurting from it. <laughs> he just had to shoot it. Oh, man, here we go. I'm going to, oh, you know what? I even have a glove. I'm, I'm going to put a glove on. I, it probably won't help because it's not padded, but I'm going to put it on anyway. All right. This is pretty cool. My Michael Jackson glove. I might just keep that on all the time. All right. 44 it won't fit oh i'll put two in there just in case in case i'm dumb enough to fire it twice this is a kind of firearm that you know you might carry in bear country or something because you're not you don't care what kind of recoil you don't care if your 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 hand hurts or you break a finger you know if it keeps you from getting eaten by a bear so that's the kind of thing you know Oh man, I'm not gonna try to hit much. Well, maybe I will. I'll shoot at this paper target. Uh, I'll probably flinch over into the blue. I'll try to hang on to it. I better be careful. I better uncover that trigger finger so I can feel it. Okay. All right. I really don't want to do this, but here we go. 
my ears in tight. Oh yeah, okay, it does kick. Comes back at you hard. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if the glove helped. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you could you could stand it. It's not it's not horrible. Until my I can't use my thumb for three days. So maybe <laughs> he is red right there. Uh, so yeah, that's what this is. Okay, I've kept my man card up. I shot it, and uh, yeah, it, it kicks too much to be any fun at all. I, I don't really even want to fire a gun like this in 357 Magnum if they're hot rounds. To tell you the truth, uh, but. You know, as long as you can manage it, it doesn't hurt you too badly. It is awfully nice to have a firearm that's very powerful and it just weighs nothing in your holster and you don't know you have it almost. So, yeah, so it's something to be said for that. But anyway, that's the night guard. And uh, it's, it's actually, how's this for confusing? Come on, Smith & Wesson. They gave this the model designation. It's the model 357. That's the model number on this firearm. It's in 41 Magnum. And the model is 357. Okay, how's that? So, just to further confuse you. All right. So, anyway, did I confuse everybody? Uh, again, in the 60s, you know, they wanted uh, an intermediate round, but it, it came out in a in an end frame, and I think that helped kill it. Uh, if it come out in a smaller firearm, might have might have worked better. Of course, they didn't have anything that would hold six. You know in frame size i guess between these two but the l frame would have been great uh as unlike this where you have the advantage of the same small gun in 40 uh still fairly high capacity and that's one of the reasons that that caliber has done so well and the 41 just didn't have the platform it didn't have the hardware uh, that was a big problem the software if you can think of the bullet as being software the firearm being hardware just like computer and software uh the software is great uh, but, you know, in this big old end frame, the hardware side of it, it, uh, it just couldn't seem to flourish. What was its major competition? Well, a handier 357, and then a gun the same size that's chambered in 44 Magnum. You know, and then you've got 44 Special, you can fire in it too. So, pretty versatile, okay? So, but anyway, that's kind of my take on the, and a little bit of the, the history of it. Uh, I think it was the first jacketed round in a standard uh, production, uh, you know, cartridge. You know, so things were lead up until then, pretty much. So uh, that's the 41 Magnum. It's a, it's an interesting cartridge, and I'm not trying to to, to badmouth it or talk you out of it. I, I think if you want a powerful Magnum handgun, you'd probably like it. Just be sure you check around on ammo. I looked on online today at one of the popular ammo sites and i saw eight or nine different uh types of ammo in 41 magnum you know so the ammo is out there uh nothing wrong with it uh, you know if you just want something different from a 44 magnum you know go for it if you can find one i think i'm not sure what all is chambered in it now i know that the ruger blackhawks have been chambered in it and, and i'm sure there's a lot of firearms chambered in it i just I'm a 44 guy, so if I'm looking at firearms, and even these, if I see an old Smith, you know, at a gun show, I'll look at it, oh, cool, a Model 29, because they look like a 29, you know, and, uh, oh, nice, a vintage old 29, and I'll look on the barrel, oh, 41, you know, I just, you know, dismiss it, because I'm not interested in another caliber than that, but anyway, pretty cool gun, this is a beautiful one, this is a, a pre-dash model, it's not, so that means it's you know what the dashes are you know like a 29-2 my big 2944 the old one is a 29-2 this one is was made prior to that there's no dash that's what pre-dash means uh so but it, it looks exactly like it you know the grips and everything it's not a five screw model or anything like that uh which i guess it wouldn't be that came out in 64 65 so i don't know but uh, this one is a little, it might be 1970 or whatever, but it was made probably prior to 73 because my 29 was made in 73. So it's, it's an old gun, it's a vintage, it's a pretty gun. It, it is nickel, by the way, if you didn't know that. This is not stainless. It's not polished stainless for some of you new shooters. You might have just thought this was a stainless gun. This was before they even made uh, you know these big end frames in stainless, okay? So it's a nickel gun. It's pinned, it's recessed, uh, it's got the target hammer and the trigger. 
it's a it's a nice little collector's piece so anyway the model 57 they did make a model 58 that was a kind of a matte finish and a four inch that was really designed for the police market uh, just like they did with the 27 357 and the uh, model 28 kind of a oh a, a no frills model without without this really nice finish and everything uh, kind of a, a beater gun made the same way but just not as slick and with nice the nice finish you know for for police carry really what it was uh, designed for and uh, and again it didn't go very far with police departments just too big a gun too heavy a gun and really even more recoil than he wanted so other than that it's a, it's a good shooting cartridge so the model 57 41 magnum we finally got one at the compound here and i am pleased to say now that i have fired one because uh in the until this week i had never fired a 41 magnum my life is almost complete now life is good <laughs> oh well since i'm still here let me take this moment to thank uh, sdi the sonoran desert institute for their support of the channel uh, we appreciate you know their help uh, sdi is a place where you can get certified in uh, gunsmithing you can even get an associate's degree in firearms technology and work in various areas of the firearms field might be appealing to you they work a lot with veterans and uh, it's just a pretty cool place so check out the link uh, sdi.edu uh, the link is in uh, the description of most videos almost all videos for the last six months or more so uh, so check that out also while I have you since I'm still here uh, be sure to to check the links in all the descriptions because you know we're on full 30 now also with all the videos so there's a link in the in the descriptions to full 30 as well as of course our sponsors uh, SDI Bud's Gun Shop .com, uh, federal premium so all the good information is there as well as uh, keep in mind that on Hickok 45 and Sun we have uh, quite a few videos over there John's doing the, the gun culture radio show over there check it out if you haven't done that yet our Facebook page uh, the Hickok 45 Facebook uh, Hickok 45 and Sun Facebook page that's where we try to stay in touch with you and uh, give you a little extra information even post pictures and uh, a little video occasionally, just, just whatever. Uh, mainly just a way to keep up with you all and provide some more information. You know, we're not really Facebookers, but it's a, it's a pretty good system for that, even though most of us are not in love with Facebook, right? <laughs> so check all that out. And you really had better check it out because I might just have to come to your house and have a chat with you if you don't. And I expect to have coffee and donuts ready when I get there. Why? Right.